arthropod is the proper term of what most people would call bugs because most people would think like a roly-poly or a spider or an insect a fly whatever they're gonna think that all those things are bugs well technically that's not correct so we try to use the word arthropod but that all depends on how technical you're gonna get because with most people if you just say a bug they're gonna assume an arthropod right just tiny small um creatures with exoskeletons that live on land um which happens to include some crustaceans as well so welcome to another episode of the dirt road discussion podcast where we are all about agriculture all of the time yet again cameron hammond is off and he left me in charge uh, and yet again, I am joined by everyone's favorite guest star, Joel Benson. Joel, I wanted to plant a little bug in people's ear Ooh. about this episode. Yeah, do you like it? I've been I like working it. On a I pump. like it. It worked. Uh, yeah. So I will ask our listeners: Have you ever wondered about those bugs in your garden? Well, today we'll have a chance to learn a little bit more about our tiny friends that live outside and inside. Our guest is going to show us that not all bugs are bad guys. So don't be scared of the upcoming episode because I think it has legs to become one of people's favorites episodes. Uh, today, we're joined by Jason Thomas, who is an extension educator at the University of Idaho. And uh, Jason, welcome. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to be here with you guys. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, like you said, I work with the University of Idaho as an extension educator. I'm in Minidoka County and I just love teaching people and I love promoting agriculture and I love uh, designing programs that make an impact in people's lives. Um, when I was uh, doing my bachelor's degree, I got a little lost. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I did a lot of work with education and I thought about becoming a zoologist. And a zoologist, for those that don't know, is a person who studies animals. And then a man came to me while I was visiting him, and he told me a joke. And this joke actually changed my life. So usually jokes don't mean much, but this did. He said to me, he said, what do you call a zoologist with a job? like what to know. <laughs> he said uh, an entomologist. So if you want to <laughs> work with any type of an animal, uh, bugs are the way to go just because of how um how big of an impact they have on humans and they're extremely fascinating there's just a lot uh, more opportunities to work with bugs than there are with any other animals so i believed him and i pursued uh, that work worked a little bit at purdue university went and got my master's degree at uh, texas a m and then i was able to come back to uh, idaho so i was excited about that i was uh, originally born and raised in malad idaho so so Jason, if I understand right, for our listeners, you're more, and we're gonna go into this today, but you're more than just telling how to, uh, a person that tells people how to keep uh, beetles out of their lettuce. You're, you're actually a person that just wants people to understand uh, insects and bugs and creepy things all around. Is that right? Yeah, that's a big focus of all the work that I do. I mean, uh, the biggest goal that I have, that's a challenge we work with in extension and in general, is just helping people to um, understand the true nature of insects because only about 1% of all insects out there are actually significant pests to humans. So most people misjudge insects and believe they're all bad and evil and scary. And so the majority of my programs are focused on trying to help people get out of that mindset and uh, it's more of a challenge with older audiences, but we work from youth all the way up to uh, farmers um, that are 70 years old. I've had them come to my trainings before and um, I've had some great uh, conversations. So, Jason, my, my first question, uh, bug versus insect versus arachnid versus arthropod, like I need, I need some, some definitions. Can you explain which one's which and uh, find them a little bit for me. Sure. Scientifically, an arthropod um, includes insects, arachnids, um, and also crustaceans. So um, arthropod is the proper term of what most people would call bugs, because most people would think like a roly-poly or a spider or an insect, a fly, whatever. They're going to think that all those things are bugs. Well, technically, that's not correct. So we try to use the word arthropod, but that all depends on how technical you're going to get. Because with most people, if you just say a bug, they're going to assume an arthropod, right? Just tiny, small um, creatures with exoskeletons that live on land, um, which happens to include some crustaceans as well. So um, that's what an arthropod is. Um, insects are a, a subgroup of the arthropods. Um, they've got... Uh, 
They've got six legs, and uh, they often are going to have wings as adults. Um, and then we go to arachnids, which have uh, eight legs. And there's different groups of arachnids. There's spiders, there's scorpions, there's ticks, there's mites. Um, so they're just different subgroups with different biologies, different uh, morphology, which means like the structures of their bodies. They're all just a little bit different. And it's just a way for scientists to keep track of different groups. But um, uh, relatively, they're all pretty much benign, but there are some that are significant uh, pests to humans and cause some problems. So we're just trying to help people understand that group because that's just one group in general that from a very young age, children are, um, especially spiders, that's one of the most feared thing of children from some of the psychological studies that I've um, gone through and read. So. Uh, Jason, I'd like to ask you a little bit about your program that you have uh, put on in your county, um, teaching young people as well as uh, adults about bugs and creepy crawlies that you that you can uh, bring out to schools or invite people to see. Yeah, so one of my main programs that I do with youth, and I'm slowly starting to wrap this up, which we can talk about here in a minute as to why, but. Um, one of these main programs I do with youth is trying to help them understand that arthropods, since you guys know the definition now, are not all scary and that they're actually quite benign. And they're not going to, they're not trying to get you, they're not trying to hurt you. So I like to let kids have that experience of holding and touching and interacting with a wide variety of different insects, spiders, um, and scorpions and things of that nature so as they get more comfortable handling large specimens that are a little more scary looking just because they're big um, then they're going to be more comfortable being around them in their daily life um, because we don't want people to just see a bug and think i've got to kill that we want people to think what is that bug what is its life cycle and do i need to kill it um, now i'm not going to say that we should keep all insects alive, right? We need to deal with them, right? I have people that have problems with bed bugs. I'm like, yeah, you need to take care of this. This is a problem. Um, but we do um, want people to think things through before they make a decision. Try to make informed decisions. Think about uh, what you're doing before you just do something on a uh, knee-jerk reaction uh, because that spider looks scary because in reality, it's probably not going to hurt you and it's probably actually providing some benefits to you. So let me uh, uh, take the conversation a little bit to where, you know, insects are going to live close to developments, people, neighborhoods, and things like that, oh, and farms as well. So what kind of advice do you give or do scientists give that study uh, insects when there's an outbreak? You know, suppose there's a shortage of predators above them and uh, a big, a big uh, population of crickets or something breaks out. Is there any advice that the scientific community gives to public leaders or farmers in those situations? This is the problem. Most of the time when people come to me and they say it's an outbreak, it's too late. So the advice we have that we're always trying to share is you need to be monitoring and you need to be checking your field very often and you need to be out there looking at it. So I just had my sister-in-law contacted me and she's like, hey, I have all these problems with these grasshoppers and they've eaten my entire bush. And she sends me pictures and they're all adults. So they basically are done growing, they're done eating and her bush has already been eaten a bunch. And I'm like, well, you should have called me two or three months ago when they were tiny little baby grasshoppers because they didn't look like a pest, but they actually were. And so that's the problem is people aren't looking until they see the damage or the problems and that's too late. And so. We're always trying to encourage people to prepare themselves for pests and try to know what the major pests are of your crop and then always be looking and scouting early. You want to be in that field as much as possible looking and scouting those plants and looking for small things that may not look necessarily like a threat but could become a threat because timing with pesticides is extremely critical and the only way you can do that is if you are monitoring and gaining information. And the earlier you're finding things, the more options you have. Um, it's just like if you were to get diagnosed with cancer, if you are basically dying on your deathbed, doctors can try and help you to not be in pain. But if you get an early detection of a cancer, you can do more things than when you find that detection late. 
And part of our pesticide strategy is to tackle things as many ways as we can. We don't say that pesticides are bad, but just like a prescription drug, which can be very good, we want to make sure that that's being regulated and you're using it only when you absolutely have to. If you're having problems with your heart and you just want a medicine to fix that for you, that can help. But if you're willing to change your lifestyle and try to exercise more, change your diet and uh, make other changes, you're going to be more effective. And it's the same thing with farms where we're having farmers not just depend on pesticides, but those who are trying to support predators, rotating crops properly and uh, using other strategies to try and deal with pests because that's when you're going to be the most effective is when you tackle it every with every possible solution you're going to just be more effective than if you only have one tool in your toolbox here on the dirt road discussions uh, we like to ask the question of uh, what you see down the road what is the future of insect and creepy crawly education and uh, to help a world that's full of a lot of information. Right now, our board game is designed mostly for youth ages 14 and up. So we're in the process of creating a kid's version of the game, which is going to get used a lot more with elementary school kids. But we're also starting to delve into looking at using virtual reality for some of these topics that are a little harder, like pesticide safety and uh, that type of thing. Trying to just always be pushing the envelope of how do we teach people in an engaging manner? Because especially in our day and age, youth are in dire need of engaging educational materials. They're gonna be much more likely to listen to something that is exciting, fun, and engaging than they are to something that is true and based on research that is not engaging. So we've gotta always be trying to push, we've gotta always be trying to integrate new ways to do educational programs and teach people because if people aren't gonna be engaged, they're not gonna learn anything. Well. Uh, once again, we've been joined by Jason Thomas from the University of Idaho Extension. Uh, thank you again for taking some time to talk with us. It's been enlightening for us. Uh, I encourage you, our listener, to go out, grab your family, grab a magnifying glass and uh, head outside and dig around in the dirt for a little bit. Uh, go see what all those creepy crawly things are up to. and. Uh, Thank you for joining us on the Dirt Road Discussion Podcast, and we will see you down the road.